Hi everybody and welcome to my video on bar charts. Now, many of you are probably familiar with what a bar chart actually is. Something maybe like the one on the board at the side of me here. What I have noticed, however, is that when you are sitting a test or an exam, quite often bar chart questions can be worth quite a number of points. The reason for that is they have a lot of detail built into them. And unfortunately, it's easy to lose points if you don't get all the detail in there. So I want to have a look at making sure we're maximizing the points for those kind of questions. So before we actually start building the graph, let's have a look at the information that we're going to use to put in it. We have here a frequency table and it is simply a table showing the colours of cars in a car park. So we have the number of colours down the side. They have been counted by using tally and added up for the final column. If you're not sure about tally charts and frequency tables, have a look at my video on basic tables and charts. You've got everything you need there. So this is the information that we're going to put into a bar chart. I'm going to use graph paper and as you can see we are starting with the axes. So from here on in it really is the detail that counts. So let's start putting information in there. If you remember we were talking about the colours of cars. So I'm going to put the colours of the cars along the bottom axis here and I believe we had red cars we then had blue white green and silver so let's put them in here there we are now remember at the beginning in the introduction I said that when you are creating a graph you have to assume that the person you are giving it to or the person reading it knows absolutely nothing about what you have been doing so you know that these are the colours of the cars, but the person looking at the graph doesn't. So even though you have put those labels on there, at the bottom, you absolutely have to make it clear what those colours are. Colour of cars. That is your bottom label. Up the side then, we're going to have the numbers of cars. Now the rule is we start at zero. And when we decide what numbers we are going to put up the side, we go in even steps all the way up. Now, the best way of doing this is to go back to our frequency table and look at the most popular color of car. In this case, it's silver with 17. So my numbers are going to have to go up to 17. So in this case, I am going to put two, four. Let's see how this fits. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and there we are, we have enough. Notice I haven't put in the odd numbers. I could do if I wish to. When you are making a scale, this is important. You have to start at zero and you have to go up in even numbers. But the numbers that you choose are up to you. I could have written 5, 10, 15, 20. You might have a graph where you have 100, 200, 300, 400. You choose that depending on the information that you are dealing with. So what are these numbers? Well, these are the number of each colour of car. Therefore, just as with the bottom, you have to put the label on here. So in this case, it's number of cars. Right, let's actually now put some information into the graph. So we need to put our bars in place. If we look at the number of cars, red ones, there were 13. So that's how high the bar needs to go. I've got an advantage with the software here. You would need probably a ruler and a pencil and try to make things as accurate and tidy as you can. It doesn't actually matter how wide this bar is. I could have made it one square wide, but I've chosen two. What is important in a bar chart is that there is a gap in between each bar. So when I put the blue cars in and there were eight of them, there's my eight and in between there is a space. You'll also notice all the bars have to be the same width. And as I go along, you'll see that the spaces are the same width as each other as well. So white cars, there are two of them, one space there 
and a two square wide bar. Green, there were four of them, puts that there. And silver, which was our most popular colour of car, goes all the way up to 17. Let's have a review now of what we've done. Have we got everything here? Well, on the bottom, we've got the colours of cars and the label is there telling us what they are. Up the side, we have the numbers in a nice even scale. And again, a label telling us that that is the number of cars. We have our bars. They are evenly widthed. They are evenly spread. And they clearly show by reading across from the top of each bar how many cars there are of each colour. However, if we were to give this graph to someone at the moment, yes, they could give us all that information. What they couldn't tell us is anything about the cars themselves. Are they cars in a street, on a motorway, at the traffic lights? They don't know. So we need to put a title to the graph. So it could quite easily be something as simple as cars in the college car park. Now the reader knows exactly what our graph is about and they have all the information they need to fully understand this graph. Now, as you can see, the bars in this chart go from the bottom and up the page. Therefore, we call this a vertical bar chart. I just want you to have a look for a moment at this graph. Might look a little bit strange, but in fact, we do see this type of bar chart occasionally. And of course, the main difference is the bars are going across the page, not up. This is a horizontal bar chart. Everything has been switched round. So the colours of the cars are written up the side and there's the label. The number of cars is along the bottom. There it says number of cars. The actual scale is exactly the same and so is the title. But because the axes have been written this way round, the bars go across. And it is perfectly all right if you wish to do a graph this way round. Let me just take you back to the original graph for a moment. Another definition that we need to understand, and this may seem quite obvious, but because in this graph, each of the colours of cars has one bar going up, we call this a single bar chart. Now, have a look at this one. It's a bar chart, it's vertical. I've gone back to the more standard version. And if you look at the title, money spent in a cafe in a month on drinks. So we know what the graph's about. The drinks quite clearly are labelled on the bottom, coffee, tea, cola and orange. And up the side we have a scale, this time it's going up in tens, and it talks about the money spent. Now, two things I want to talk about here. The first one is this scale. Can you see how the numbers are just 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? But in fact, in this particular graph, these numbers don't just represent numbers, they are actually amounts of money. I could, if I'd wanted to, written a pound sign on the front of each number. That is okay to do, but to make things simpler and look slightly tidier, rather than doing that, I have written pounds there. You have to do one or the other. If the numbers are representing particular units, pounds, miles, kilograms, then you need to say on the label here what they are representing. Now, the other thing you'll have noticed about this graph is that when you look at the coffee here, there's not one, but two bars and they are in distinct colours. And each drink has the same two bars, a purple and a mustardy colour. So why two? Well, over here, this graph has something that the first two didn't. It has something we call a key and it is telling us that the purple bars are representing January. So this is a month in January, whereas the yellow, the mustard coloured bars are July. We call this a dual bar chart. It's got two bars for each category. And what it's doing is not only telling us how the drinks compare to each other, it's telling us how things change between January and July. So for instance, the coffee and the tea sales are higher than the cold drinks in January, presumably because the weather is cold. But in the summertime, the sales of coffee and tea have dropped, whereas the cold drinks have gone up. So there's more information and more that you can compare and analyze in a graph like this.
So let's just have a look and recap the elements that you need in a graph if you're going to score full marks in a test. First of all, it must have a title. Tell the reader what your graph is about. Labels, and it says all of them. Make sure you are labeling each category plus an overall label. Make sure labels are on both sides. Make sure there's a suitable scale starting at zero, going up in even steps using whatever numbers you need and mark the units if they are there. If it is in pounds or kilometers, tell the reader what the scale means. Make sure your bars are even widths and make sure the spaces in between them are also nice and even. And if you do have more than one bar for each category, as we saw earlier, make sure there is a nice clear key. Make sure you have all those and you will be fine. So hopefully that has clarified some of the detail that you need to get into a bar chart. And hopefully in future, when you're faced with that kind of question, you'll be able to get maximum marks. If you found that useful, please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the notification button as well, you'll get to hear whenever I bring out another video. And uh, I've put one of them on the side there that you might find useful. Thank you.